Hello, my name is Joe, and welcome to another episode of my Indie Devlog series. The last few days have been pretty productive, so I'm excited to share with you what I've been spending my time on. I've been exploring some more in-depth parts of Unity, and I'm pretty happy with my progress so far. On a side note, I'm very jealous of developers who, after writing their code, are able to say things like, I had a great workout with Kate that ended in a beautiful walk outside. I'm going to get outside for a bit, go for a run, clear my head. Because after I've tried writing any code, I'm more like, My brain hurts. I'm sure this is a mentality thing that I will learn to be better at, but for now it can definitely feel quite challenging. Also, yes, my bed sheets are polar animals, please don't judge. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video. I've made a fantastic discovery thanks to comments on the previous video about a tool in Unity named ProBuilder. With this tool, I can ProBuilderize any mesh within Unity, and that means that the editing that I had to do in Blender in the last video is a thing of the past. This is way more intuitive for me, so I'm really glad this is an option. There's a companion tool to ProBuilder called Polybrush that I've not played around with yet, but could also help me further with anything I do in level design. As a quick example, here's how I was able to extend the scaffolding for this building on the shoreline so that it was able to hit the beach's geometry below. I've decided I'm going to implement a day and night cycle. There was a video that was infinitely helpful with this. I'll post a link to this in the description below. The main reason for wanting to do this is because I love the way that the island looks at night with some lighting effects I've been experimenting with with Unity's particle system. That brings me nicely onto the next feature in the game. Using the particle system, I've created a wind effect that I'm quite fond of. It seems like the particle system is such a versatile and creative tool, so playing around with it has been an absolute blast. The overview here of the island might look a little bit off with the amount of wind particles going on, but when viewed from within the game's camera, I'm really satisfied with how this looks. This look was heavily inspired by Wind Waker, which is another seafaring game that is very close to my heart. If you guys would like a more in-depth tutorial about how I achieved this look, let me know as I'd love to go more in depth on how this was achieved. I know I said in the last video that I tried to do more coding as opposed to level design, but I couldn't stay away after finding out about ProBuilder and the options that it gives. I've almost finished up with the main look of the island right now. I've amended the governor's house to be not quite so ridiculous. I've increased the vegetation massively, added a section of the island for animals and livestock, and finally made the left island much larger and included another house. I've put two NPCs on the island too, a shopkeeper and a fisherman, just so my main player feels a little bit less lonely. With the island resembling something I was happy with, I remembered some wise words from the great Brackies. Playtest. So, I packaged up my game and sent it off to a few friends for them to have a walk around the island. This honestly was really invaluable. It turns out that I was kind of design blind to some issues with the camera movement, and also the cursor wasn't locked to the game screen. These were two aspects that I hadn't really considered, so thank you to the following people for their help and constructive feedback. On another camera-related note, I've switched to perspective cam for the foreseeable future. You can see that the edges of my island and floating objects in the sea now have a layer of sea foam. From what I can tell, this is only possible with a perspective camera right now, as it makes use of a camera depth feature in a shader. Camera depth is something that the orthographic camera lacks. The prevailing sentiment in the comments of the last video is that perspective was the way forwards anyway, but this made the decision even easier to make. I've achieved some basic interaction with objects. My player can now click on an object and run to it, even if the object is moving, which is some nice progress. However, there's some issues with objects not resting directly on a nav mesh. For example, if an item is on a table, because it's not on the nav mesh directly, the player doesn't register the right path to walk over to it. I've been looking at some videos for ways around this, but I haven't figured out anything just yet. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that I'm overlooking. And that about wraps it up for this episode. If you enjoyed the video at all, then please consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell for more similar content. 
Something to note right now is that the game doesn't actually have anything that is close to a real title. I was thinking about maybe just going with Flagstone as the title, but I'm not really 100% on that right now. If you have any ideas or suggestions, then please leave them in the comments below. Something else that I also wanted to give a really quick shout out to was the fantastic support that I've received on my videos so far. The first devlog is actually sitting at close to 1000 views within a week of uploading, which is just incredible, considering that I had never uploaded anything game dev related to on this channel before, or, or at all. Um, so really, from the bottom of my heart, I, I do appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Until next time, peace.